Okay, well, I think we are now live. Um, I can't see if anyone's actually joined, so I don't know if anyone else of our panelists can. Um, I can see 14. Oh, fabulous. Wonderful. Welcome. 15. Brilliant. We'll just be starting very shortly um, in about one minute and we'll, we'll get started just to give some time for everyone to join. I can see more people are dialing in, which is great. So do, do feel free, free to introduce yourself in the chat box where you're dialing in from. Um, it's always nice for us as uh, hosts um, to see who we're speaking to as well. So just before we start, we'll be starting in a couple of minutes. I just saw my sister's name in the uh, panel uh, in the uh, attendees. So shout out to my sister Catherine, who I think dialed in from London as well. Thank you. Oh okay, yeah, well, Catherine. Yeah. yeah, I think we're ready to start. Um, we'll probably get more people joining later because I, I do know quite a few people. We we had um, quite a few people sign up, so we'll we'll get started and hopefully people will join um, as we come. So, well. Good afternoon to, to everyone and good morning to those that maybe are joining from different parts um, of the world. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Ramadan Karim to all those that are celebrating um, Ramadan this month. I'm really excited to share um, this panel session with you today on creating inclusivity during Ramadan. Um, we started Ramadan on Saturday, so I think for those that are celebrating, they're already almost a week into, into Ramadan. So I'm Haley. I'm the chair for today's panel. I'm also a petroleum engineer at Shell. I'm the vice chair of the newly formed Diversity and Inclusion Committee here in um, Aberdeen. And I'm also being really blessed to have some time um, working in the Middle East, in Egypt and Iran. So I was part of the, um, the idea behind this session because I really wanted to learn more about um, Ramadan and how I can support my colleagues and friends as a non-Muslim. I've also joined by the wonderful Sully uh, here. She's dialed in from Canada, so it's about 7 a.m. for her. Um, so thanks, Sully, for joining. She has a vast amount of experience from the Middle East, originally from Algeria. Um, she basically came to Aberdeen and has now actually started her own business as in climate technology. Um, her business is Eco Energio, and it's an energy tech as well. So thank you, Sully. It's great to have you here today. And then we're joined by Ola. Um, you're dialing in Ola from Cairo in Egypt. Um, Ola is a well engineer for BP. She has also never uh, worked in the UK. It will be the first time that you're coming to the UK permanently. She'll be moving to London next week. So I think uh, Ola is going to have some really interesting um, thoughts and shares around potentially doing Ramadan for the first time um, outside of Egypt um, in, in London. So which will be really exciting. But last but not least, we have Ash, and I'm going to try and not fangirl because Ash has been sort of all over LinkedIn, I think, and Instagram. Um, we're really lucky to have her here today to give up her time. And she's a DE and I and wellbeing consultant. Um, she has her own business, Changing Mindsets. It's worth definitely checking out um, after this session. She uh, supports as well um, and mentors women, particularly women of color. You have over 11 years experience across um, different functions as well. And I think Ash, you're, you're very much about creating safe spaces for people to sort of be their best versions of themselves um, without fear and judgment. I think as well that particularly as a female um, South Asian Muslim woman that you're really keen on sharing some of your own experiences to, to create those safe space and people can be their best versions and create meaningful change. So thank you very much for, for joining us today um, as well. So how the session is going to work, we're going to start with a uh, essentially a, a kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, about Ramadan. So Lee's going to take us few, through a few slides just about what Ramadan is, going back a little bit before we sort of jump into what hopefully will be quite an informal session um, around um, inclusivity in Ramadan, informal but personal as well to those that are joining. 
if you have any uh, questions throughout in the zoom at the bottom if you just drag your um, mouse down to the bottom there is a specific q a box so you can put any question that you have into that box we will be having around a question session around quarter to the hour and if you can just let me know exactly who you might want to put the question to in that q a so if it's to ash just say like hey ash but and that will just allow me as chair to direct to the right person if not i'll do my best to to choose a, a panel member that will be best to do that so thank you very much and without further ado i think i'll pass to yourself so be to just get started on a little bit of what Ramadan um, is. Super. Thank you so much for the intros, Hayley. Really excited to um, talk to you a bit about um, Ramadan. Uh, really briefly what it is, uh, what it means to Muslims and how to perhaps um, use some quick, um, well, understand the main activities and what happens at the end of Ramadan as well. Uh, happy to take any questions throughout or at the end um, as suits. Maybe please. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so the holy month of Ramadan is a 30 day period where Muslims fast from sunrise to sunset every day. So, Ramadan is the ninth month of the Hijri calendar, which is, um, which is a calendar that is 10 to 11 days. Um, sorry 11 to 12 days shorter so uh, it means that ramadan comes earlier every year probably by 10 to 12 days say 10 11 to 12 actually um ramadan is an arabic word and it comes from the root aramad meaning dryness or heat and ramadan begins at the sighting of the new moon So um, the big, thank you. So the beginning and the end of Ramadan could differ per location, depending on the site of the moon. So Ramadan begins the day after the new crescent moon is spotted, which can actually be tricky since it's quite faint and can be seen for only about 20 minutes. You can see the photos here from four different locations on the same yeah, you can hardly see the first, yeah. Um, Ramadan is the month in which the holy book was revealed. It's one of the five pillars of Islam, and the month is observed with fasting, prayer, charity, community, and faithful intention. And the month ends with Eid al-Fitr, the, the, the feast of a fast breaking. Now, now, although fasting is most commonly understood as the obligation to fast during Ramadan, it is more broadly interpreted as the obligation to refrain from dawn and dusk from food, drink, um, and all forms of immoral behavior, including impure or unkind thoughts, which is why bad intentions are as destructive of a fast as is eating or drinking. Um, there are, although there are some exceptions to the rule. So for anyone who becomes ill during the month or for whom travel is required, extra fasting days may be substituted after Ramadan ends. Um, however, children and elderly, the sick, and those with learning difficulties, as well as um, pregnant or breastfeeding women are all exempt from fasting. So um, for Muslims, Ramadan is a period of really introspection, communal prayer, and reading of the Quran. So some typical Ramadan activities include tzahar, which is a meal before dawn, um, iftar, which is the breaking of the fast, uh, ziyarat, which is quite important. It's all the social gatherings, visiting relatives, sharing food with neighbors, friends, and mainly the poor. Uh, tarawih, which is an optional prayer um, at the early night, so after iftar. Uh, qiraat, which is reading of the Quran during a free time throughout the day or the evening. 
and qiyam, which is an optional late prayer in the last 10 days. So marking the end of Ramadan is the feast of fast breaking called Eid al-Fitr. Um, and it also involves Zakat al-Fitr, which is a compulsory donation that must be done before the Eid prayer, early on Eid day. And the purpose of it is to enable the poor to celebrate Eid. So Eid al-Fitr is next celebrated on the 2nd of May, subject to sign of the moon. I guess, um, yeah, it's a bit cheeky there. Um, so if you wanna greet your friends, colleagues, or anyone um, celebrating Eid, you can use Eid Mubarak. Brilliant. Well, well, thank you, Sulu, for that sort of 101 through um, Ramadan. We thought it was important to just sort of set the scene. I think um, a lot of um, friends and colleagues has mentioned to me when I, I mentioned that we were doing this event, um, they, they weren't too sure even what Ramadan was. And I think maybe one of the um, assumptions is that it's all about fasting. Um, and I think um, that might be the visible thing people sees. And as we see, that's not there is exceptions as well to that. Um, and, and thanks, Ali, for for highlighting. I think that it it involves way more. So, I think really interested to kick off the panel um, here today with um, making it a bit more personal. So, I, I think what we'll maybe do to, to kick start, if it's possible, to to ask each of the panelists, um, starting with yourself, Ash. You know, what what Ramadan really means to you. Thank you, Hayley. So thank you for that, Sally. There was a lot of insight into that, and I think that was really valuable. And it's always really important to start off with, you know, what is Ramadan and why we do it before we get into the whole personal and bring, bringing um, inclusion into the workplace. So I think that's a key place to start. I think personally for me, yes, Ramadan is, you know, fasting from food and drink, but I'm someone that actually fasts throughout the whole year on a Monday and Thursday. And this is just the practice that our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to do. So it's just something that I've um, adopted throughout the year. So the food and drink is really the easy part for me. But what Ramadan really means to me is like it's a, it's a time for reflection. I sit back and I think about what I've done over the last year. What good habits have I built within my life around the people around me? And what bad habits that I've probably carried on and bringing into this year? And what I do is I really think about going into the next year, starting now, what, what good habits am I going to build? What am I going to do? What good intentions am I going, going to start? And it could be something so small, whether it's something personal to me, as in looking after myself a little bit better, because even that is a form of worship. We think that, you know, worshiping is only the prayers or reciting of the Quran, but actually it's so much more. Like we believe Allah gave us this body to look after and I want to make sure that I am looking after that body. So whether it's a form of, right, this year I'm intending to um, exercise so I can look after this body that God has gifted me, that's a good in intention. That's a form of worship to my Lord. So I really reflect upon what I've done over the last year, the good habits, the habits that probably don't serve me anymore, and think about what am I going to do going into the next year. Um, it's also thinking about those that are less fortunate to us. So throughout the whole year, we have various opportunities to be able to give to the poor, which is known as sadqa. But in R Ramadan, you know, we look at zakat, we look at everything that we have, and we only have to give away 2.5% of that, which is so small. And actually, after uh, my uh, prayers this morning and after my suhoor, this morning, I was actually sat there calculating my zakat. I have a spreadsheet that I take out every year and I was calculating, and it humbles you because sometimes you sit there and you don't think that you have a lot. You're like, oh God, like, how am I going to make ends meet? And when you do this spreadsheet, you're like, I have a lot and I only have to give a small portion away. So it makes you, it fills you with gratitude. It really mm -hmm. humbles you and think it makes you believe I have so much. I'm so grateful for I, what I have. And I'm so grateful that I'm in a position to be able to give to others. So I think that's a really key point of Ramadan for me. And finally, it's to build that deeper bond with my Lord. Like I have a really funny relationship with my Lord. Like your perception of your Lord is your reality. And I always say, when I used to be in the workplace, I used to be, I used to say to my colleagues, right, I'm off for my one-to-one -one with my Lord. And everyone's like, what? 
And I'm like, anyone have any requests from God? Like that's the relationship I have, almost like a friend, because no one knows me better than my Lord. So Ramadan is a real opportunity for, for me to build that deeper bond with my Lord. So yes, it's about the fasting from food and drink and the ill thoughts, but it goes a little bit more deeper. And that's what Ramadan means to me personally. Thanks, Ash. I think that, yeah, like very powerful in your words. I always get a bit of shivers. I said this to you when you sort of speak um, when we first connected, because I think that one to one that you mentioned with God or in many ways, I'm sure people that are dialed in today, you know, come from many different backgrounds and um, and potentially religious or no, not religious at all. And I think sort of having that understanding of how how sacred it can be and how how much more it is and just sort of abstaining from maybe coming mm -hmm. along to a lunch or not drinking the whole day. Um, and I like what you said a lot about um, it's your time to sort of reflect on yourself. I think I uh, I saw something on, I think one of your colleagues or friends on Instagram last night, she mentioned, I think her name's Farah, Farah. She mentioned about how it was like a software upgrade for her going through this, you know, um, a, a little bit like an iPhone and how you software upgrade your iPhone. Yeah. And I like that because for me, it was something I could relate to as well. So that's great. Well, I think um, Ola, um, you're dialing in from Cairo and we, we mentioned that this is your first time sort of um, doing a Ramadan potentially in the UK coming, but what, what does Ramadan mean to you, Ola? Yeah, no, thank you, Haley. And uh, first of all, thank you so much for the amazing session. I was telling you earlier how excited I am and, and, and um, I truly respect that we're having this session and um, being thoughtful about thinking of inclusivity to include Muslims in Ramadan in a, in a place where the dominant is not Muslim is very important. So first of all, I'm very honored to be on this session. Thank you. And I wanna thank Ash, she reflected so well on part of what I was going to say. So, so I'm not gonna be uh, taking longer repeating. So first of all, Ramadan is uh, for me is a very exciting time of the year. I'll tell you why. So of course it's a time where I religiously, I reflect on my faith. I try to, you know, pause a bit and, and, and feel the gratitude that I have, the amount of blessing. We also in Ramadan try to lose uh, a lot of our, you know, as you mentioned, reset or lose a lot of the bad treats that we have. For example, we do uh, a lot of gossiping that is, you know, not, not correct and it's not right in all religions, right? Or even, you know, it's not something that is good in any way, regardless of the religion. So um, similar treats, we try to lose a bit, we try to tone down our anger, we try to, you know, you can take it like a meditation session, uh, if you like, if you if you want to, uh, it's, it's quite similar to me, where I'm, I'm, I'm very calm in the morning, and I kind of reflect as, as Ash mentioned. But also, one thing I want to add, coming from Egypt, it, and of course, most of Arab countries or um, uh, Muslim dominant countries are the same. It's a very uh, much uh, of a cultural or I say social uh, kind of festival uh, to us, where we we kind of gather with the families and friends for iftar, and uh, it's kind of an, no one is allowed to have iftar alone. We always have family gatherings and friends, and for suhoor, and we go for the prayers together. It's all about gathering and then making sure that, for example, the person who who is uh, less fortunate that you are is 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 having the food they need. We we uh, give back the excess amount of food. We make sure it goes to the right people. Sometimes you go out in the in the iftar time, and uh, you know distribute um, food to the people who are driving. Maybe drivers they cannot like pause their job to to have a meal. So these kind of social events is kind of very very important uh, to us. And as you mentioned, because this is my first year, I'm, I'm uh, moving to the UK. I was a bit like concerned about about that because. I'm not gonna have it, so so that's maybe part of uh, of where I come from. I, I just want to reflect, that, reflect that in Ramadan is kind of a festival or a feast where in in these countries is so much felt and uh, within all the the, the the rituals that that you're that you're doing. So I'm not gonna jump to to, to the UK part now, but but I'm just giving a, a, a more of a sharing a reflection of of what Ramadan means to us. Maybe uh, not from a religious point of view as it is from a culture and a, so a social, because in Egypt, we have a lot of Christians uh, and uh, actually there's so much friends and family again to us. So one of my best friends is not Muslim, but she still goes with us on the same uh, kind of activities that I just mentioned quite same she even most of the time eats with us at the same time because it's a more of a you know spreading this culturally and uh, in a social way which is in a nice way as well love that Ola and I think that 
reflection as well there's probably more that we could be doing potentially in in um, our industry um to kind of bring that time together and um, so it's not just it very much has that community feel um, and we'll, we'll definitely get on to I think um, some of the things that I know that your company are doing to support you as you come and um, in terms of the uh, I think although you mentioned about it wasn't you know particularly in Egypt there is different nationalities there's different um, religions and it's it's not always um, fully religious and I guess Sully you, you have a sort of unique experience as well where it's maybe a bit more cultural for you practicing Ramadan. Yeah, I guess echoing um, Ash and Ola's words, um, absolutely, um, Ramadan is a time for spiritual reflection and, and growth and personal development. And, and mainly, um, in my experience, helping those in need and spending time with your loved ones. Um, I guess, yeah, there is, um, there's also a part where um, growing up in Algeria, um, the understanding is that whether you're practicing Muslim or non-practicing, a Ramadan brings the same excitement. Um, so it, it still is about the process of celebrating your religious identity and committing yourself to growth and lasting change. So uh, I remember many would express their hopes and goals to finish off the month a better person than they were when they started. And that is exactly what you described there Ola um, a, a really uh, beautiful thing it is a personal um, experience as you mentioned Ash it is between yourself your, your relationship with your Lord um, and your relationship with yourself as well it is all about what what you get what you put into it really that's great. And I think that's hopefully even just for me sitting here. So I think hopefully for people that are on the call as well. Uh, and I know we've got people that are, are very much um, non-Muslim to to understand that how, how different whilst there's a lot that binds, I think, together that makes it very beautiful. I think for, for me, what I'm taking away here and what I'm hearing is that um, it, it's uh, it's very personal as well. Um, and I can imagine there's a lot of thinking and reflection that goes on during this time on top of potentially the obviously the fasting. Um, one of the questions that, that I sort of had, um, and I think it just come out of this, this session is, it, is essentially what, what exactly does sort of fasting, what can it actually do to, to you? Is it something that you find very, very hard to begin with? I think Ash, you mentioned just there that you sort of fast on a, a Monday, is it Monday and a Thursday? Um, sort of normally as as um as your prophet did so do you find that you still go through some of the same um difficulties to begin with or is it something that you just sort of take in your strides like is there any anxiety I guess as you come up to that month for me personally I'm just really really excited to be participating in this month and whenever we enter this month we actually thank our lord for allowing us to see another Ramadan because we it's such a blessed month and Every year we hope that we get to make it to Ramadan because no one knows when, you know, when their time's up. So we always pray that we get to see another Ramadan. It's never the anxiety for me. And I think for me, when you talk about well, what do I find the hardest? I think for me, it's not the food and drink. It's everything else. It's being patient. It's not getting, it's not being short with my husband or my child, you know, showing patience when it comes to them. I think that's what I probably really struggle with. And every time I'm like, if I see myself getting a little bit annoyed, I'm like, um, bring it back and I have to keep reminding myself you're fasting you're fasting and I'm trying to practice this all year round whilst I'm fasting and you know one of my mentors um always says to me the fasting from food and drink is the easiest part for you it's the everything else it's the having the patience which is the the thing that you really struggle with and it really is so when I come into Ramadan I always think okay this year like it's the, for me, it's the same thing. I'm working on the same things every single year, but I reset that intention every year, and I think I will get better. And I do see little. I do see myself getting a little better each year, but I'm a work in progress. Like Sully said, you know, it's about personal development. So I think the hardest part for me, if you're asking me, is definitely the um, everything else, not the food and drink. It's the not getting angry, not uh, making sure that I'm patient, not wanting things here and now. So that's the thing that I really struggle with. That's brilliant. And I guess, Ola, for you, um, you mentioned that you did have a bit of um, 
maybe anxiety um, coming to to London um, from Egypt. So I don't know if you you're okay, sort of speaking a little bit about that and and maybe how it, how it sort of changed. I guess uh, I was speaking to you last night before this, and there's some things that obviously your company are doing um, to support you. Yeah, no, thank you for the question. Um, so basically, as, as I mentioned before, for me, it's, it's a very exciting time of the year. And as we all know, as we all uh, spoke about um, moving to the UK. So I started last September. I was um, I moved to a different team who are non-Egyptians, mostly uh, non-Muslims. So I'm, I worked remotely to support a team who is based in the UK. And then uh, recently, I'm uh, I'm just about to move, like I'm in the middle of the process of moving currently as we speak. So when I, when I joined the team, it, so working before that from Egypt, Ramadan was like, it's okay, it's easy. Everyone's fasting and, and everyone is celebrating. And even the working times are a bit... Uh, it's a, it's like a government rule that is less uh, working hours, et cetera, et cetera. But then when I kind of, I thought about this Ramadan, even if I'm now in Cairo, but I'm still working with the UK hours, supporting the team in the UK. So I thought maybe um, I'm going to be, what will happen? Will they accept if I say that I need to take a break or, uh, you know, um, you know, I don't feel like I feel different now. So that's what that was my concern. But I was so, so surprised that the first check in meeting with my senior um, uh, engineer uh, last week, he, he specifically paused for like, you know, 10 minutes out of this meeting or maybe 15 minutes, which is the 30 minute meeting. He spoke specifically about Ramadan and uh, Ola, what are the hours, uh, what hours would work for you? Uh, what would you like to, would you like to change something? Would you like to take a break? Please let me know if something changed. I told him, I was like, the first two days I have headache because I'm not having my morning coffee, but that's fine. <laughs> so then the other than that, the, the, the timings are working well for me. And, uh, and the other thing that happened is that um, uh, one of our VPs actually sent an invite for um, for an iftar, for a kind of a, a normal breakfast invite after, just after Ramadan in the office to celebrate it uh, during the Eid time, to celebrate the ending of Ramadan and having everyone, it's not for Muslims or, or, or someone specific, it's for everyone, like kind of to celebrate with the Muslims ending Ramadan and having Eid, because of course Eid is not a, a, a vacation, it's not a public holiday in the UK, but she still, she still wants to bring that vibe and, and make sure uh, they're thoughtful about uh, the Muslims celebrating and Ramadan and Eid. And that was really, really nice of her. One other thing that uh, kind of a lot of, not a lot, like a couple of colleagues, I was surprised that they told me, we want to experience one day of fasting this year with you guys, which I was amazed. And they were actually so, do you think we can do it? I was like, no, you, do, you don't need to do it. Just you can do a half time, maybe a part time fasting, uh, intermittent, whatever. But they they were so keen on sharing this and being thoughtful. And I thought just you know even even uh, the the intention to do that is is very very thoughtful. And I, I, I kind of the concerns that I had uh, kind of disappeared really honestly. And I was so uh, um, you know re respectful to my team uh, asking about that and even greeting us in Ramadan. And um, yeah, that was really thoughtful. So 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 that was my experience within this year which was different from all the uh pastimes that's great i think that i think the just hearing as a as a non-practicing um muslim and obviously non-practicing in ramadan i think just having having the insight to what you were saying there about what can help um and i think it's from what i'm taking away is sort of i guess having that respect or even just having a little bit of know-how of what the month means and um I think I shared Ash with yourself and Sully, like when we were running up to engaging on why this event had started, that some of the things that I'd sort of overheard um, over the years around, you know, people putting their lunch, you know, having their lunches right beside someone, which, you know, it's not necessarily um, an issue. I think it's just having that conversation. Um, uh, so I don't know, Sully, from your perspective, was there anything that you've kind of faced that's been quite difficult um, in terms of uh, going through Ramadan within the workplace specifically. Nope, oh, I don't know if you're frozen. I think you might be frozen, Sully. So I think I'll, I'll um, you might have to, uh, Sully is dialing in from Canada, so it might just be that her, her internet connection in her trailer 
<laughs> isn't quite as good. So I guess I'll ask, I don't know if you mind if I sort of direct that from you to you um, in the sense of, I know you've worked with quite a lot of people as well, particularly um, uh, people of colour and um, uh, Muslim women as well. I don't know if, if there's anything um, that, that stood out for you of some of the difficulties people face during this month. In the workplace specifically? In, yeah, I guess in the workplace specifically, yeah, if that's okay. So uh, firstly, I just wanted to add, I was just typing while Sully was uh, going to answer. I wanted to say to Ola, Ola, in, if you're coming into London, there's a huge community in London that are always breaking fast together, whether it's like a mosque community or a centre community. So when you come over, like, I will definitely ping you over some of the places that I know and then you can definitely get involved and you're not far from me either. I'm in Surrey, so maybe we can do an iftar together as well um, if you're free because I can see that your colleagues are completely taking up all your Ramadan time, but there is <laughs> definitely a huge community here that is opening their arms to welcome you. So do not worry, I promise you, you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> and in regards to uh, in the workplace, I think the thing that really stood out for me for women uh, in particular, I'm going to share a personal experience of mine. So one of the things that happens during Ramadan is, you know, Sully shared it early on that, you know, when women are menstruating, um, if they're breastfeeding or they're pregnant, they're exempt from fasting. These are fasts that we can make up at a later time. Now, when I was pregnant, I was very early. I was probably, I think I was two months pregnant, uh, pregnant or three months pregnant at the time when Ramadan started. And it was a really emotional time for me because my, you know, as far as I can remember from the age of seven years old, I'd been participating in Ramadan. And now all of a sudden I wasn't able to fast. Um, I could, but I chose not to because I attempted the first day and I had to break the fast because I, I just couldn't. And I thought me not fasting is also an act of worship because I am looking after the gift that the, my God has given to me, which is my child. But at the time during the work in the workplace, I was eating and no one really knew that I was um, oh, Sully's back. I'll ask this question and then we'll, then we'll let Sully continue. Um, so, yeah, I came into the work. Uh, I was very early on in my pregnant days and I wasn't eating and I was getting a lot of comments like, why aren't you fasting? Oh, are you being a bad Muslim because you, you're not fasting? And I wasn't I wasn't one of these people when I was. Um, when I used to be on my period, so when I was menstruating and I used to be fasting, I think I was a lot more discreet because I come from a culture where we're not, where we haven't been brought up to openly talk about, you know, menstruating and men aren't supposed to know. Now that's slowly, slowly changing for me, like even in my own household around my parents, uh, like my dad and my brothers, like that's definitely changing. But when I was growing up, it was very, very different. So I think it's just embedded in me that I've always been a bit discreet. But when I was pregnant, I just needed to eat. So I was just eating away and I'd get all sorts of comments. People will constantly say to me, oh, why are you not fasting? Um, are you being a bad Muslim? Oh, and, I, and I didn't want to tell people that I was pregnant at that time. I, I hadn't even told my manager I was pregnant at the time. And so it was very, very personal to me. And I think that's what I really, really struggled with because I, I knew that I was being judged. I knew people, even from like my own community, some of my... Um, Muslim colleagues were looking at me like oh god like she has no shame she's openly eating and and I think that's more a cultural thing not a religious thing because our religion allows us to be exempt from fasting for these reasons but it's more a cultural thing but I really struggled with that because I was like people are going to think that I'm this bad Muslim I'm a bad person because I'm not fasting but I have to eat because I'm pregnant but at the same time I don't want to tell people that I'm pregnant so I think when I do these posts, if you see some of the posts that I've put out there on my social media, I think the reason why I did that is because I'm like, I don't, I don't want people to experience what I experience. You know, you always say like, you find a solution to the problem that you actually face. Well, that solution was to create infographics and create resources for people to share. So then they knew this information. So they'll be a lot more mindful and think, actually, I'm probably not going to ask her why she's not fasting or why he's not fasting or why whoever's not fasting because you know they may have a valid reason and I, I don't know what that reason is um, and I shouldn't pry because it may be something that they don't wish to disclose with me. Yeah absolutely I'm just reflecting myself like um, I can see that my um, I believe that my line manager actually is on the call and I'm just thinking like I would never <laughs> I, I probably can be quite um, 
uh, depending on the month can be quite up and down. I think everyone can be naturally. Um, and even in the UK, I think that um, particularly British people, we, we can be quite polite in many ways, not maybe have those direct questions that can be needed. And I'm just thinking like, you know, I can't believe what he would feel like if I suddenly had to go and speak to him about being on my period or something, you know, um, he's going to take the absolute laugh out of me after this, but um, I, I know he would be very supportive. Don't get me wrong. He absolutely would be, but it's, um, I think it's those things anyway that we already face in British culture potentially um, and equally within an industry um, that's oil and gas specific and energy now that where we um, we're quite technically focused. It's not to say that um, we don't have great people that I think um, are really championing this area. It's just like historically it's quite technical. So to come in the office and maybe have some of these conversations, I can imagine can be incredibly daunting um, and can maybe impact people's mental health um, throughout this month. Uh, when it's meant to be a big massive celebration right it's almost like two different um mm. things at play and um i'm not sure if um there is people that feel as though they maybe have to hide certain aspects of themselves in the workplace to then come at home um and then you know be able to be themselves around their friends and family and i think that transcends a lot of different um areas right um of of race of different backgrounds sexuality as well that um it's, this is why it's really important that I think we get it right on in times like this, like Ramadan or other areas, because it, it kind of has a breadth across all the spectrum of being able to be yourself um, as well. So thanks, Ash. I think that was a really personal one. And I think it's really important, something I didn't know actually coming into this about um, if you are pregnant, if you are menstruating, all the different exceptions um, to not to try and be a bit open to and educate mm -hmm. yourself if you are a non-Muslim and you're seeing people break fast or for different mm -hmm. things um so Lee, i'm going to probably ask a question when you seem to have um paused again <laughs> it's just a great um timing i think oh uh, am i i am using my phone's 4g so it oh i think goes. you're back i think you're back so it's okay <laughs> but um so Lee, i was gonna gonna ask because i i know that you've had experience um working in kind of quite remote parts when you were working in Middle East as well as you know remote site work um so maybe uh, similar to to offshore environments and just wondering with yourself um how, how was that experiencing Ramadan um in a bit of a different environment um yeah um um it was it was actually lovely listening to um Ash's answer I, I'm sorry all I never heard um what you said about your experience at that moment but uh, I don't think it would be too dissimilar uh, to what you just described Haley. whether it is about religion or just any other uh, personal um, matter uh, in the oil industry um, we're, we're not known for people skills so it's it's not something that 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 comes naturally to just go into the office or go uh, to the site offshore or onshore or anywhere and, and, and tell people about how you're feeling that day or what's going on in, in your life so so I guess it becomes it becomes something that you keep quite you know um to yourself and and and, and you feel more and more excluded from from the team I wouldn't say that it is necessarily the team's fault it is a shared responsibility Again, the, the communication goes both ways. If you don't share that, um, if you don't share that with your team, they're not going to guess what's going on. Uh, and equally, if if there there are no, um, I'm trying to find a word for not rules, but ways to facilitate these conversations in the work environment, people are not going to know what questions to to ask, because. Um, it's one thing trying to be an ally but it's another fearing to say the wrong thing you know is, is someone gonna um you know are, are they gonna feel comfortable um asking you out at the weekend um not understanding whether you fast or not or what what's your habit during ramadan uh, so people do feel uncomfortable as well and equally um i find that making an effort to understand other faiths and other personal situations makes it easier for you to share your experience. So again, this isn't just about Muslims, it is about all faiths, it is about all um, personal circumstances. So in the workplace, it's, it's all about the environment the leaders create. 
um, in that they make that space for um, that psychological safety for their employees to, to be able to um, share what they're going through or not. Um, yeah. Sometimes that, that is the case where some people don't feel like, you know, speaking about what they do at home or, or what, um, what, what goes on during Ramadan. But if you wish to share those things, then there should be that space um, with your colleagues and um, friends and, and neighbours and, um, and whatever. I mean, I would imagine all I would be coming into um, London um, into a new environment where, you know, you're not going to go around and go, do you fast? Do you okay? I can hang out with you. <laughs> uh, so it, <laughs> I guess it, it, there's a bit of learning there. And But you, you'll be quite lucky in that it's quite a, a, a big and established um, company and that hopefully they do have those, um, those sort of facilitations in place. I think, Ash, you said thanks, Ali, because I think based on what you were saying, rounding up about creating that safe space um, and that two way conversation, I think um, Ash has put a brilliant um, sort of comment in there, Ash, about psychological safety as well and creating that environment. And I think something I reflected on, on, um, you know, what, what stopped me in the past having those conversations. And I guess I had a pre, I definitely had sort of some pre assumptions, um, partly that were my own, or maybe just because of the people that I was around as well, that I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to to start a conversation and and one of the reasons we did this event as well was so that people after this call could maybe come out and say hey you know I was at this meeting um, or, or the session um, I learned this or even in their team meetings or at the beginning of the week just to to kind of put in something about being in Ramadan um, even if you don't know anyone in the team um, that is practicing I think just creating that um, kind of um, way of thinking and that safe environment is really important um as well so sorry, i think on that maybe, sorry Ash, go I ahead just add, i just yeah want please to add do that. go ahead yeah. and what you were saying there is so key about you know people going back and saying i attended this uh, event that was based uh, that was based on you know inclusion around uh, ramadan and i think what when we talk about allies sometimes this is what an ally is an ally is someone that they've gone out they've educated themselves so i can see clearly from uh, some of the comments that are coming through that not everyone here is a Muslim, but you've made that effort to come out because you thought, let me educate myself. Let me learn a little bit more about the faith, a little bit more about what they do around this um, holy month to Muslims. What do they do around this month? And then I'm going to go back and feel a little bit more comfortable to have those conversations. So when you go back and you say to someone, wow, like today I learned that, you know, there's certain people that are exempt from fasting. I didn't know that pregnant women could fast or people that are unwell could fast, as opposed to going and saying, hey, why are you not fasting? Can you explain that to me? And I think that's, di that's the difference between a true ally and just someone that's being nosy and they want to know. And I think, you know, when you have, when you've been brought up in a certain way and when you're uncomfortable speaking about certain things or when you just don't want to tell someone why you're not fasting, I think it can be, it can be, you know, quite nosy. You're being, you're prying in, into someone's personal life when it's got nothing to do with you. But is it not enough that you've done your research? You've, you've gone to these events. You found out actually the reason why people fast isn't this, this, this. In your mind, you know, that's probably one of the reasons, and they probably don't want to share. So I'm not going to pry. <laughs> and I think it's also about, you know, the calling in versus calling out. And you know, Sally, you made a point about the ownership is on both parties. Absolutely, it's on both parties. But however, I do want to remind everyone that sometimes people, the reason why they're not comfortable sharing is because they have, they may have experienced times when they were felt, felt quite excluded, or they may have faced microaggressions around Ramadan, um, or made to feel a certain way about practicing their faith. So all of a sudden, they don't feel comfortable sharing about their faith or talking about how they feel. I'm someone that's very open about my faith and I'm, I openly practice it as well. And I'm like, if you don't like that about me, that's a you problem, not a me problem. And I'm okay with that. But I know how sometimes people can feel like I may, I might not get promoted if I, if I constantly don't, you know, um, if I'm constantly saying that I don't want to go out for Friday drinks to the pub, you know, there's so much that can happen that impacts people that stops them from sharing about their personal life, which is, so, you know, in this case, we're talking about their faith. So when we talk about the ownership being on the individual, 
me myself, I'm very open. I am happy to educate people about my faith. And I, I do daily practices. So at workplace, I used to tell my colleagues knew that I used to fast on a Monday and Thursday, you know, before I went self-employed. And they knew that let's not plan any lunches or anything on a Monday and Thursday because Ash will be fasting and then sometimes we'll come in. But we had built such a relationship between us that when I'd fast, they were like, oh God, Ash, you're fasting, we can't have lunch. I was like, well, you know, it's Monday or you know, it's Thursday, but we could have that. Whereas someone <laughs> saying to me, oh God, here she comes, like messing up our lunches again, you know, fasting. <laughs> this is the difference between calling out versus calling in. When you know that someone is just being curious and they're genuinely interested and they genuinely care and want to know, you can take that opportunity to call someone in. But when you know someone's being ignorant and saying, mm, I don't know how you do this, I would never do that. And that's being ignorant and that's being disrespectful. And I'm, I don't, at that, in that moment, I can turn around and say, actually, you're being quite disrespectful. But that's me. Someone else might not feel confident enough to speak out and say that. And they may think, oh, wow, like, I'm just not going to talk about my faith in the workplace anymore. Sorry, I've gone off in a bit of a... No, it's I'm good. I think, like, as I say, I think we're I all nodding. And... That, I just want people to know that, you know, yes, the onus is on the individual, but we almost, we also should take it upon ourselves as allies to really go out there. And, you know, this, this doesn't just stop at uh, faith, right? This, this, uh, this goes beyond faith, you know, sexual orientation, race, gender, whatever it may be. It goes way beyond that, that we have we have a responsibility to go out and educate ourselves a little bit more about the people that we work with, the people that we live around and the communities that we serve in, right? And that has the benefit that you touched on, on just being better performers, right? You better, you work better as a team, you, you deliver more, you trust each other, you're able to have those conversations and say, hey, look, I'm struggling, I need some support today. I'm very lucky, I, I've definitely got that in, in my team. And I see the impact that that's done compared to how I was working even a year ago. Yeah. Um, and how different that is to kind of be accepted for who you are. Um, and that is a very you know from a business point of view it's, it's very beneficial because they can you know actually get more out of you um as well so I don't know Ola if you have any thoughts yourself I know um yeah, no, at first, uh, yeah listening to Ash here and, and Sally earlier uh, I think the audience are so lucky to to, to hear from uh, from you Ash from what you said it's very important but I want to reflect on a very important aspect uh, regarding what Sally was talking about which is working offshore or on the site so I worked two years offshore on a rig which we work of course uh, shifts like we work day shifts night shifts etc so I experienced Ramadan uh, offshore as well and that was in Egypt where the majority of the rig crew and I'm talking here not about engineers okay I'm talking about roughnecks uh, workers operators who actually do physical effort and work which we, we say that eating and, and drinking is not an issue for us but for them they might get, go to an extent that they're so dehydrated and they're so tired and, and that's they're, they have fatigue and that's that's a safety risk here we're talking about. So because of the majority of the crew were uh, kind of Muslim, they used to have breaks and they used to alternate and you know help each other. So I'm kind of thinking now it's very important. Let's say if you're in a country where the majority are not Muslims, it's very, very important before Ramadan to try to understand who's going to be fasting and maybe in a way shift them to a night shift or make sure if this is not doable, make sure that they are you know feeling well to work have said like my well set leader used to get me all so I at that time I was still a challenger in BP and I was learning and I was out all day and out all night and he's like Ola you're dying like go, go to bed I was like okay I'll take a power nap in the middle of the day which just because I'm fasting and I can't get coffee or water and and that's okay and I, and again I'm still now an engineer based in office I'm talking about people who do actual physical effort that we have to be very very thoughtful of working in a, in a very hot weather or a very cold weather kind of doing physical effort and fasting that's that's huge that's mm -hmm. actually the benefit of Ramadan that we think of these people they have to do this for money to support their families they don't have the luxury to take days off they don't have the luxury to uh, to take Ramadan off just because they can't work so so this is really really important to highlight <laughs> especially in our industry. Sorry for being wrong. No, I think that's so important. Hopefully, I know there's a mix of people on the call and I can recognize a lot of names that do work in kind of the offshore um, space as one of the main sort of professions as well. And um, hopefully if they've not got things as uh, well, 
please do feel um, you know, able to reach out to, to any of us on the panel and all of us specifically if, if there's anything that you'd like to know more about on how maybe to support um, in, in kind of the industry in that way. I, I know personally, I know someone, um, a colleague um, within Shell that works offshore during this month and there's been really good provisions made for sort of prayer rooms, but equally, you know, there, there is so much more um, to that um, within um, sort of the evening and food that you have to have. And it's equally something very similar you said there all that like they don't want um just you know our line manager or, or the leaders to say hey look just don't work this month or come back to the office you know that it's still still their identity to work and it's what they love to do and they have to also provide for for their their family so i think finding that balance is really important um and sort of doing some of the run-up probably before ramadan but equally even if you're in the middle of the month and the company or people that you know colleagues aren't doing anything maybe use this as a trigger to sort of start those conversations and 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 keep it positive um and and actually be about including people across the spectrum so I see we're coming kind of to um uh sort of the end of the panel and um, I want to have a couple of minutes um for questions as well so I see I do have a, a question in here um that um someone has put in that want to ask sort of I guess everyone maybe shortly um about how would you recommend bringing up Ramadan with colleagues if they haven't volunteered that they're practicing um, in terms of how we can offer support and accommodate any needs in the workplace. So I don't know, Ash, for you, if there's a colleague that, or, or colleagues in your team that you're not sure if anyone is practicing, you don't want to make that assumption because that in itself can be, I guess, um, quite excluding behavior. Um, how, how could you maybe bring it up um, as a team? I think events like this is incredible. So having an event like this and encouraging people to attend, uh, whether they are, and what you will see is, when, when you go to your team and say, I attended this event, um, you know, uh, focused on inclusion around Ramadan, your Muslim colleagues will turn around and be like, oh, wow. And what that does is it, it opens up that little bit of psychological safety that we said, that you have made the conscious effort to go out of your way to research about my faith. I feel a little bit more comfortable to share with you what, what, what I'm doing and what I'm participating in. I think, you know, sharing... Um, whenever you find resources the infographics that I put out but I know there's so many other uh, work out there that people are putting together and I think sharing that within your teams um, I think within an organization having a a message from the senior leadership team the most senior person just to recognize and acknowledge especially if you've got a huge number of Muslim colleagues that work for you just acknowledging that Ramadan has started that way, managers know that, oh, wow, Ramadan has started. Because if, if no one's going to tell them and if the employees are keeping it to themselves, they're not going to know because it's not something that impacts them in any way. Whereas if a message comes from the senior management team or from you know the, the, the MD to say, hey, uh, Ramadan Mubarak, everyone just sending out that note, it kind of acknowledges. And the Muslims in the team feel like, OK, now, wow, my organization has acknowledged that I'm going to be observing the month of Ramadan. Um, if you have got colleagues that have kind of said, I am going to be celebrating, um, uh, I am going to be participating in Ramadan and celebrating it, I think that's your key to say, is there anything I can do to support? Because you saying, okay, that's great. Um, let me know if you need any uh, accommodations, but actually sitting them down and say, I appreciate it's the month of Ramadan. Is there anything I can do to support? If your employees haven't come to you, but you know that they are Muslim and they are participating, just go say, can I have a conversation with you and ask them, you know, I know that you're participating in this month. What can I do for you? What can I do to make it easier for you? And then just educating yourself. You know, I keep saying that the reason I couldn't believe how much my inclusive language post resonated with people because I was like, it's so simple. How did it resonate? But it's because of the simplicity that it resonated because it's so easy for us to fall into a trap of getting things wrong. Um, and I think that's really important. So I think definitely more events like this, definitely sparking a conversation, going back and say, hey, I attended a, a, this event that was hosted by SPEE, SPE, and this is what I learned. What are your thoughts around it? Is there anything you'd like to add? I think those are the kind of things that really create that inclusive inclusivity when it comes to Ramadan and people opening up. Absolutely. No, I, I think that's, 
um, so powerful the message to take away of kind of educating and finding out some of the information if you don't understand and have questions and um, I don't know if my screen is my screen still sharing at all um, yes. can people see because um, I think these are the, the infographics some of the infographics yeah. asked that you were meaning um, so like these are the sort of infographics that Ash this is how I actually came um, about Ash through LinkedIn I saw these um, because I, I personally had someone in one of my other teams that is going through Ramadan and I wasn't sure how maybe Maybe to to support so I went on LinkedIn had a search and a lot of these posts had gone viral for amazing reasons because all the story that, that came up were about Muslim colleagues or, or non-Muslims trying to understand basically how to communicate with each other and I, I think what I loved about some of your posts Ash is that you used you know try and encourage you know these sorts of words that I think are not about saying that you have to do this but just try and we all do make mistakes um, quite often I'm definitely one for um, putting my foot in it on a daily basis but at least I you know I do try and say really sorry like you know I didn't understand that or I'll do better to, to keep understanding um, what it is. So in the, the closing sort of moments here, um, I just wanted to kind of take from each of you as panelists, um, sort of, I guess, what, um, what you'd ask people from this session to, to maybe go and uh, sort of do after this. I think Ash, you've already talked upon it about potentially uh, people uh, sort of having some of those uh, meaningful conversations. But one of the questions that's in, in the, the box that I can see here as well, um, is around a Muslim colleague um, who essentially hasn't shared this um, with their line manager, with their team. Um, how could they go about maybe having that conversation constructively without maybe that fear that you said, um, Ash? Is it about just doing it, diving in and seeing where it goes? Um, I don't know. Sully, do you want to start with this one and we'll, we'll end on Ash? So Sully, how, how would, um, you know, how in the past have you had that conversation maybe with your line manager or your team? Or have you had that conversation, I guess? About opening up about Ramadan and having to maybe fast, some of the provisions that you might need, that you might need some meetings later, uh, sorry, earlier in the day so that you can maybe get away on time. Um, um, yeah, I guess it is um, echoing on Ash's words just now. Um, when the senior leadership give that space, that safe space for employees to feel heard, included, and perhaps psychological, uh, psychologically feel like they can open up. Um, it, 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 it becomes a totally different situation where you don't feel like you're losing half of yourself just mentioning that, you know, uh, Aid is coming up, I need to take five days off because, um, because you know, um it, it's it's like christmas and you know uh, i'm gonna be traveling i'm gonna be seeing the whole world i'm gonna be eating lots of sweets and and not be in a mood to be working so it, it's quite important to kind of have that relationship um with your line manager with your colleagues as well all i mentioned earlier her colleagues uh do understand to the point where they want to take uh, part in, in fasting that's amazing because they've actually gone past the I've educated myself and I support you they, they're actually jumping into the I'm going to try it with you because I want you to know that whatever you're going through I'm going to try and experience so I connect at a deeper level with you and I, I find that quite amazing um equally um I think taking, taking the opportunity to also learn from this ourselves, as I said earlier, we're all responsible for doing that bit more to educate ourselves about what everybody's faith, everybody's uh, personal situation uh, entails, and then have those one-to-ones. So acknowledge people's situations, holidays, ask simple little starter questions, um, engage with uh, colleagues, employees, neighbors, That's great. friends, yeah, or absolutely. Um, who, who, whoever it is. So it's plenty there to do, are I guess, simple... in that space. Um, sorry for cutting think, you off. I just see the time. I, and has... I, I also wanted to, I see that there's a hand gone up um, just before the end in the conversation. I believe, is it Teddy that you potentially have a question? Sorry that I've not actually seen it. Um, uh, if you do want to come off mute. Um, 
and asked your question. Let's see if I can uh, see if I, uh, I don't know, Diane, if you're able to help on mute if Teddy wants to ask or if maybe he didn't mean to put his hand up because <laughs> it does happen. Sorry, Hayley, do you mind if I quickly just jump in and Yeah, ask please, in the meantime, please, Ash, go, I go ahead. I just want to the last point um, to the question that you are asking about the, you know, what to do in that situation if you notice a colleague not, not uh, hasn't disclosed to their line manager that they're fasting. I think I was typing it in and I don't know what's going on. My hand just kept saying send, send, send. So I was like, the message is not coming up great, but I thought I'd just say, um, and the thing that I wanted to say was, if you find that employees aren't sharing with their line managers, I think that's a real key moment to start reflecting and asking yourself, why do our employees not feel comfortable sharing that they're participating in the month of Ramadan? What, what is the culture like within our organization? Because we're so quick to say, why is that person putting the onus on them? But actually bringing it back to you and say, what have we done to create a space where people feel comfortable sharing? So that was the only point that I just wanted to add to that because I know we we're coming to the end of the coming time. to the end. Yeah, because I, I know with the lunchtime kind of 12 to 1 or um, uh, in and other places, wherever we are, that I think the the, the best thing is um, to to say a big, big thank you to all of you, to to Ash, to Ola, to Sully, um, that it's been really insightful. I wish I know we could probably continue this conversation and maybe it's another time that we can we can uh, have as well, because Ash, I know that you're, you've got a wealth of information, not just within Ramadan, but actually across the DEI space um, and as you can see that you're you're a great speaker in there as well so we're, we're really grateful to, to have your time and I just wanted to say um, that uh, for those as well again a, a Ramadan Karim, a Ramadan Mubarak and um, Assalam Alaikum and I, I really um, am grateful to have had this opportunity to speak to all three of you and, and learn more and um, for anyone that's in the conversation um, in the chat do feel free to to reach out to us at SPE DNI Aberdeen find Ash on LinkedIn um, changing mindsets as our company interact and um, there's plenty of opportunity as well um, to to get um, Ash potentially in to speak within your companies um, or do some work for you because um, as you can see it's a, a great opportunity we've had today so thanks to everyone and I wish everyone a lovely afternoon or, or the rest of their morning um, and and